Hello everyone, Amy Rosavi here for Prairie Paper and Ink, and if you've been watching my videos lately, you guys know I'm kind of obsessed with watercolor in all forms and just experimenting and playing around a lot lately. So that's what I did today. I had um, a large sheet of watercolor paper that I cut down to five by seven, and I didn't have a board big enough to put both of them on the same board. So I taped one to my masonite board and the other one to my little Epicurean cutting board because I thought while I had the time, I might as well experiment even more. And I had, and I couldn't make up my mind what color combo to use. So I pulled up my Gonsai Tombi watercolor paints and decided I wanna do one in pinks, yellows, and oranges and the other in blues, greens, and purples. So I pulled out the colors I wanted to use and, um, added water to them to activate them. Something really technically it's easier to just spray water onto them to activate rather than like picking up the water from the um, your container with a brush. Um, and another note, it helps to have two containers of water when you're doing things like this, like one container to clean off your brushes and then one container to um, use with the actual watercolors. I was kind of all over the place. I was just having fun and making a mess. So I just use a plastic insert. I showed this on a previous video. I just use the plastic insert that comes with my Gonsai Tambi watercolors and I just use it as a palette. So I get the watercolors wet and then I'm pretty much just pouring them right onto the palette here so that I can um, access them that way. And then I got a bigger brush. This is a Grumbacher brush that I have had for a while. It comes in a set of three, I think. It's quite a big brush, but I used it and I got the one panel completely wet. Like I used a lot of water and really, really saturated the watercolor paper. And then I dropped in the yellow, the orange, and the kind of pinky red color of watercolors. And the color was already starting to kind of like pool along the edges. So I just used a tissue to pick up um, those pools of color. And then I set it aside. And then for my second one, I decided rather than getting the whole thing wet, I only um, wanted kind of the lower corner. So got that wet and then dropped in the green, the blue, and the purple. And I wanted to intensify it a bit, so I picked up the color straight from the little watercolor cake and then, you know, dropped that in. And then same thing, I the color was sort of pooling along the edges, so I picked that up with a tissue and set that aside to dry as well. That is... One of my mantras now is to try and allow things to air dry, but I failed miserably with these, just so you know. <laughs> this I did let air dry mostly, and then I got impatient and heat set it. And then I wanted to intensify it because it dried quite pale, and I just wanted to experiment like layering color. That's something I'd never really done. Um, yeah, this was all just an experiment. So I picked up the colors again, this time again, directly from the watercolor paints and kind of um, applied them that way. And then I, I did want it to be a little more messy and splotchy. So I did that and I sprayed it with water here and there and I splattered on watercolor. My camera battery died while I was in the middle of this and I was too involved in it all to even notice. So I heat set it and actually the heat setting flattened it out. Whereas I don't know if you guys could tell very much there, but this one that I was letting air dry, it was really starting to bubble where the watercolor was. So I heat set that and it helped kind of flatten it out a little bit. And um, that one I just left. I didn't add extra layers or do anything kind of crazy. This was the one that I did all the crazy layering. And then I hit it with my, hit both of them with my heat tool just a little bit again. That just heats up the tape so that I can pull off this painter's tape and um, it heats the adhesive a little bit so it comes off cleaner. Um, yeah, that's just one way to avoid if you don't want to tear the edges. I wasn't super concerned with these because I, I was planning on die cutting them anyway, but I just thought I would show that because I did have a lot of people mention that when I had shown in a previous post when I ripped the watercoloring I had done. Um, so yeah, I die cut the pink and orange panel with um, the stitched die from My Favorite Things Blueprints 20. And then the blue and green panel I die cut with the largest die from the Blueprints 1 Dynamics. And then I set that aside. And then I'm using the Avery L Simply Said Crazy dies and stamps for these. So I die cut the word crazy right from this watercolor piece and then popped it out because I didn't want to end up damaging it. And then I was coating it with my anti-static powder tool because I plan on heat embossing the rest of the sentiment. And I don't want the embossing powder to stick to anything else. And I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to put the sentiment at first and then decided to just plop it right under there, right beside the bottom of the Y. So I stamped it in Versamark ink, which is just a clear, sticky ink. And then I'm coating it with some white embossing powder and tapping off the excess into a coffee filter so that I can funnel it all back into the container. 
and then heating that with my heat tool just until it melts. And then I wasn't, again, I still wasn't sure because I'm just playing around. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do if I was going to pop this up on foam tape, if I was going to, I didn't know. So the easiest way to do what, um, cause I want to stack all these die cuts is I just use plain old scotch tape so that I had something to adhere the die cuts to just because it was more convenient. You could even um, glue a piece of copy paper, you know, if you don't want the dimension on the back, whatever works just so you have something to adhere the die cuts to. And then I used my um, Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive and adhered one of the plain die cuts back into this. And then I popped the centers of the A and the Y from the watercolor piece into it. And you'll see why in a moment. And I used the Multimedia Matte, even though this is the tape is sticky and this will stick. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, down the road, it's not just going to fall out. You know, you just never know. So rather be safe than sorry. So I'd use the multimedia mat and then I had three more plain die cuts and I adhered all three together with the same multimedia mat. And then I adhered the watercolor one to the top of that. And I say this every single time, but yeah, I love the multimedia mat because it gives you a few seconds to kind of um, wiggle things around and get them adhered straight. So once I had it all adhered, I added the adhesive to the inlay die cut there and then pop this right back on top. So it gives this really cool dimensional look, which you see more in real life um, and you'll see it at the pictures at the end. So as a final little touch, I had to add some sequins, of course. So these are the pretty pink posh sparkling clear mix that I love. I have a couple packs of them and I just keep them stored. This little glass jar I got at Michael's for like a dollar. Um, yeah, I keep them stored in the jar right on my desk. I don't put them away. I don't have them stored any other way because I use them on pretty much every card now. So use the sequins, adhere them with a multimedia mat. And then for the second card, I grabbed a scrap of vellum and I am, I coated that with the anti-static embossing powder or anti-static powder as well. And then I'm stamping the large crazy stamp from that set with the Versamark ink and then coating it with the same white embossing powder. So getting that all covered, making sure I have it covered completely. And I'm going to heat that with my heat tool. I love heat embossing on vellum. It does not take very long. It literally takes seconds compared to heat embossing on cardstock. Um, so you just heat it on just until it's melted and then move the heat tool away because vellum can turn very brittle if you overheat it. And then the second crazy die in this set is an outline die. And I really like it because it cuts out the outline as well as the centers of the letters, which I think is kind of unique. So I lined it up and then I adhered it with some micropore tape just to make sure that didn't shift in my die cut machine. And then it cut out um, the stamped word along with a slight vellum border, which was what I was kind of going for. I just thought that would look really cool. So I lined that up onto this watercolor piece and I had already coated it with my anti-static powder tool. And then I chose two coordinating sentiments with um, the set. And I was kind of just flying by the seat of my pants here. Normally, I would stamp the one, coat it with embossing powder at the very least. So you could see, because you cannot see where you stamped. I couldn't even see where I'd stamped them. So I was kind of taking a risk here, but it worked. So stamped them both, coated them with the embossing powder, and then melted them with my um, heat tool. And then to adhere this die cut... This was really easy to adhere since the letters are so thick. I just applied the same multimedia matte adhesive right behind the embossing, making sure it doesn't um, wasn't going to ooze out around because you'd see it through the vellum. And then line that up between the two sentiments that I had already um, stamped and embossed. And then, of course, I thought about using, you know, enamel dots or something, but I'm obsessed with these sequins. So I added some more of these to this one as well and just adhered them into place with my multi-medium mat. So once those were all adhered, um, I was going to use foam tape, but I will show actually how I adhere these to the card base. So the card base, I just took a full sheet of heavyweight white cardstock that's eight and a half by 11 and I scored it at four and a quarter the entire sheet with my Teflon bone folder and then I turned it and cut it at five and a half. So I've got two card bases already scored. So fold those and then I just press down um, the fold with my bone folder again. It just gives a really crisp um, seam right there. So get those done. And then um, I wanted to do something to the inside. I wasn't really sure what to do because the sentiments in the set weren't really going to work. And I was like, mm, but I always have to finish the inside. That is my thing. So instead, what I decided to do is I took a couple pieces of the same watercolor paper and just cut them down to about four by mm, five and a quarter. And then I've shown this in other videos. I'm just picking up the watercolor with a brush 
a wet paintbrush and painting directly onto the stamp. And with sentiments, it gets a little bit finicky. It doesn't always work. I'd actually tested this out off camera um, on just the card base itself. Like just, I was just gonna stamp on the inside of the card and it was a hot mess. So this works a little better on watercolor um, cardstock. Still not perfect, but it's still just fun. So I just stamped the crazy both times in the same color scheme as the fronts of the card. And I just use a baby wipe to wipe off the stamp really well in between. Um, these watercolors will stain your stamps. It doesn't bother me in the least. Um, the longer it sits on them, the more it'll stain. Um, with the pink, yellow, and orange, I ended up spritzing it with a little bit of water just to get the color to move a bit more. Like I said, you just, you need to experiment with it. It always turns out different and words are the hardest, but it, it was enough. And then I would just complete the sentiment, like use that word crazy uh, in whatever way I wrote to the recipient. I just thought it would finish it off and yet kind of makes it a little more open-ended. And yeah, I didn't use foam tape. I decided to use some craft foam because I have a whole stack of it sitting here that I bought, you know, to use on projects and the colors I never reach for. So I cut them down to just slightly smaller than the panel here. So I chose blue on purpose for this one because, you know, you'll see the blue peeking out on the edges underneath, like when you're actually holding the card. So it kind of matched. Um, and I used score tape to adhere it and I, you know, used a ton of score tape. It was kind of overkill, but because the, these watercolor pieces had warped a little bit, it just adhered it really, really flat to the card. And I did the same thing with the other piece. I took some yellow um, craft foam, cut it down to just slightly smaller than the panel, and then used a bunch of score tape to adhere it to the card. So it's all popped up and perfectly flat and it won't um, warp at all if I just used foam tape. So those are my two fun little crazy watercolor cards for today. If you are interested in any of the supplies used, um, anything like that, I will have the links to all the supplies in the description box below the video, as well as a link to my blog post where I'll have the pictures here posted and then same with all the links, as well as links to all my other cards in this series. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.